payment. Make sure not to drop anything into the uh, intercooler. So I'll plug it up with a rag. Check the one-way clutch. You can see this one's moving. Sixteen. You don't need the locking tool, but it helps. You have to remove the uh, serpent belt tensioner because it blocks the lower timing belt cover from being removed. Take a layer of skin off to find the metal. Oh. These are razor blade and You should be able to find the, uh, the piece of metal that's sticking in there. I might have gotten it already. Good way to remove the fingerprints. It was a bit premature with the cap.
is a 16 in the bracket here. it set it top, top dead center um, this guy here it's got to be over here a bit more so we're all, actually almost there this has to come down you'll see in a minute and then we're going to drain coolant from here while the car is up in the air check the suspension controller ambitions and the brakes that bushing starting to crack, still okay. If your wheel has a security bolt, the tools in the trunk are in the glove box. I have a couple of sets. I usually guess within the first three. Wow, first one. Don't forget to drain the intercooler later. This one doesn't look like it's ever been drained. There's no screw in it. BEW, you turn the crank until the uh, alignment tool lines up or fits. crank lock is in right now and now the cam lock should fit as well so the cam holes don't line up can't turn the engine with the cr with the crank lock so take the crank tool out Tur turn the engine by hand until the cam tool is able to go in Okay, 
think it goes in nicely. Now obviously the crank doesn't fit, so what you do is you loosen these three here, and then you can rotate the crank without uh, turning the camshaft. The cam gear will turn, but the actual camshaft won't because it's locked. But before I do that, I'm going to take the crank bolt out because the crank seal looks like it's leaking. Drip tray under the oil cooler uh, coolant line. Whichever one is easier, I guess. You just use a pry bar and gently wiggle the belt, uh, the uh, hose loose. Only ever try to break, only ever try to break the crank bolt loose while the belt is still attached. Ideally, you want to use a counter hold tool with a big breaker bar. If you have an air gun, that should break it loose. And we're just going to want to leave it a little snug here. So we're going to try to. Put the locking tools in. And reconnect the coolant hose now so you don't forget. Slowly turn it until the cam tool fits. It's too far. in the cam bolts. There's an, there's an arrow on the tool here. You need to align it with the arrow right here. Okay, and unscrew this. It's 15 for the tensioner. What you want to do now is block the tensioner. First, rotate it counterclockwise. More so, it's important when you when you install it, but for now, it can actually help with belt removal. If I can find the hole. And you want to insert the locking tool. Uh, 
Come on. Insert the locking tool and then turn it clockwise until it stops. Lock the tensioner. Or tighten the tensioner or not. It should give you now enough uh, slack to take the belt off. The two lower 16 millimeters for the engine bracket. One is nicely visible, the other one is hidden. So have to feel for it. Once they're loose, you can usually just spin them out by hand. You won't be able to slide them up because the chassis is in the way, so you're going to drop, drop the bolts with the bracket. millimeter roller idler roller or whatever just pull that off now you should be able to take the belt off along with the engine bracket Kind of tilt it out. Okay, while the locking tool is in place, you can loosen the crank bolt, which you loosened earlier. The bolt gets replaced. The uh, sprocket can be reused. You just thread some bolts in there and just wiggle, wiggle the sprocket off. <clears throat> Easier said than done sometimes. Trying to wiggle it from behind. Mm. You can see a flat spot, that's the key. That's how the uh, sprocket is orientated or matched to the crankshaft. Crank seal removal, I'm not going to show. That can be a controversial subject for some. Uh, I don't want to start a debate. You basically just pry it out, put in a new one. Water pump is next. You want to replace this uh, stud and the one that comes with the tensioner. A good kid will come with all of that hardware. So 15 millimeters again for the tensioner. Nine. 
And then you, t you double nut this stud and you double nut this one, you turn the studs out. But first we're going to pull the water pump. 10. It drips right under the pump and then just use a long screwdriver to pry the pump free. You'll see better on your car. Keep getting interrupted. Mm -hmm. Take two eight millimeter nuts, lock them together, and then you can turn the stud out. As you can see, once I took the water pump out, you, I cleaned this the mating surface so that the uh, new o-ring will have a nice place to sit. So to break it loose, grab the inside nut and turn counterclockwise. Loctite on these studs, that's why they're stiff. Okay, same thing with the timing belt tensioner stud. Just put a couple of nuts on them, provided they'll go on. This one doesn't have any Loctite on it. Okay, and then you just verify that your kit has everything you need. Belts, water pump, O ring. Tensioner. The lower roller. Nut for the tensioner. Nut for the lower roller. Should be this way. Two studs. And a locking tool. Assemble and reverse of removal. Installation of 
crank seals is quite easy actually with the right tools. There's a uh, initial sleeve tool that you slide the uh, seal over and then you use this factory tool, factory tool to push it in place.